What's up? I'm Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to work with Lumetri scopes inside of Adobe After Effects. So this is a new update that they released this spring in 2017 and we're going to take a look on how to use them, how they work and yeah, what good can they do in Adobe After Effects. So this is something that is already existing in Premiere. So if you have experience with color correcting in Premiere using the Lumetri scopes, um, this is exactly the same thing. So if you already know it, this tutorial isn't for any use and if you are planning to do some color correction or some color grading inside of Premiere or After Effects uh, this video can work for you either way so let's jump into Adobe After Effects and get started all right so here we are in Adobe After Effects and actually if we now go to window we have a new workspace called color uh, well actually it might already have been existing before but now you're going to get this Lumetri scopes tab right here so you have a few different options that you can choose right here so currently um, we have um, we can also have presets but currently we're watching at the waveform RGB I don't really use this one a lot what I like to use is the parade RGB and also um, well I'll toggle off the waveform um, and I also like to work with the vector scope for the YUV and this one right here all right so I like to work with these two and you can also set your project settings to 32 bits so we have a little bit more options so you can click over here 32 bits or you can alt click until uh, you see 32 right here and then right here we can do the same thing uh, for float which means uh, 32 bits so now we have a little bit more col color information for this kind of shot it doesn't really matter because it's a shot on my GH4 but for example on my GH5 if I would be recording in 10 bit and I'm not going into detail if you don't know anything about this I just suggest to look it up but if you're working with more bits um, this might be of use here inside of After Effects so you can do a little bit more in here so let's go to the effects controls and here we're going to add a color correction Lumetri Lumetri color there we have it and if you're going in the basic correction and the basic correction is actually meant to do color correction so color correction uh, is a big difference from color grading so the difference is that color correction is tuning your shot to look as realistic as normal as it could be so I'm getting the whites right on getting the shadows and the highlights right and stuff like that and adjusting the adjusting the white balance and stuff like that so this is color correction adjusting each shot to look similar to each other and to look as natural as possible color grading on the other hand is to stylize your shot and give it like this warm feeling or this cold feeling this this dark feeling stuff like that that's all grading so we're going to take a look Lumetri scopes these scopes are actually used only for the color correction part so you really are going to narrow down the colors first and after that you're going to do grading it's going to get all over the place well I'm not entirely right. You can use your Lumetri scopes to get like the skin tones right while you are grading. So that's something different. Uh, so, but mostly you would use it when color correcting and then you would grade on top of that. But, but you have to keep in mind how the skin tones are and stuff like that. So we'll do that right now. So here uh, we can actually see that we can set our white balance. If I click on one white part of my image, uh, which is this one right here, actually I'm going to uh, pick the brightest part. Um, this is going to set the white balance for my scene so I, I am lucky that I already have something white in my scene um, but you can adjust that using these two values right here all right so now what you can see on these um, Lumetri scopes is actually the color um, if they are similar so right now the color is very similar this means that my white balance is on point let's say you would increase the temperature you would have a shot looking like this you would see that your red colors are actually more explicit than your greens and your blues so the more you're going to to turn it to the left the more blues you're going to notice and that's what it is doing so I'm already lucky that my colors are very good from my GH4 um, I could maybe increase the greens just a touch here so I'm going to set this to three and there we have it so this is a little bit more similar uh, maybe set this to one and by adjusting these you're going to see that these values here you can actually see that I'm trying to get these on point um, I'm trying to get them as close as I can all right, so once we have our white balance, you can see actually on the screen right here that the colors are very similar. The reds should be a little bit more. You can just increase that using the arrow up and down. So going down, um, well, going up is going to increase the warm tones here for my scene. And we're, 
ideally trying to match up all these colors to look very similar. So this should be the ideal white balance. And also for my blues right here, you can see that actually uh, my highlights are getting away a little bit. So I'm going to lower this until it actually touches uh, the top here. Okay, so now my reds and blues are very similar. The only thing I need to uh, do now is play with my greens until everything looks the same. And there we have it. So this is basically the correct white balance. So if you don't have this white balance selector or you don't have anything white in the scene, this is how you would take it and uh, try to match these colors together. Now let's take a look at my skin tone. So to see my skin tones, we need to use this vector scope, but we can't actually just see my skin tone so what i like to do is use like a lips tool zoom in to my skin here and i'm going to make a mask around here and now you're only going to see this vector scope and as you can see um well actually if you don't know how to read them um you're going to see that this is actually on point so what we are trying to do ideally is that these colors are on this line so around this line is perfect trying to keep them in the middle around here depending on the saturation you're trying to create for your scene but having them on these on, on this line is actually uh, the best way you can uh, get your skin tones right so Perfect. So that's because we did the white balance and my GH4 already has these skin tones um, pretty well on point. What you could do is like if you're going to see that if I'm going to increase my warm and cold tones, it's going to move along that line. I'm going to undo that. If I would, on the other hand, play with my greens and purples, which is right over here, you're going to see that this color is going to shift uh, to, to the left or the right. So we want to keep it on this track. And yeah, this looks pretty neat. So once you have done your skin tones and they are on this line, you can delete your mask like so. So now I'm going to fit this back to my comp area. Another thing uh, you could use these scopes for is to see how your highlights and shadows are performing. Currently, again, my camera is pretty good, so I'm already seeing that it's pretty good on point. Uh, but if you would have like overexposed areas or underexposed areas, you could see things like this. Uh, you could see that this isn't really touching the, the bottom here, and then you would see this flatness. So what you should try to do is increase the blacks, uh, well, uh, decrease the blacks until they're actually just touching that line on the bottom here. So I'm going to do that very, very slowly. Actually, zero is just on that point. So it doesn't really matter in this case. Uh, you can also read the highlights. All right, so if you like this kind of shot, that's great. I think it's a little bit too much overexposed. So I'm going to lower um, my highlights to 35 or 25. And also, it's not that if you have all this information about scopes and RGB parades and stuff like that, that you only have to look at this part of your image, that you only have to look at this part when editing your colors. You should definitely check out your final result because that's what people are going to see. And sometimes you want to just stylize it a little bit because you're going to see if I'm getting any creative tab here. I want to introduce a lot of warm tones. You're going to see that these colors are going to shift all the way. So I can actually see that if I would do this like this, um, Maybe I like this kind of style, you would see that it's all messed up right here. So that doesn't matter, that's grading. The most important thing is that you don't clip uh, blacks or highlights. And that happens when you increase this too much. You're going to see this, this line here that is actually really kind of clipping your highlights. And you can see that this area is now completely white and that's not what you want. So same for the blacks. You can really clip your blacks to become like this and that's a really bad thing. So I'm going to reset that to zero. And there we have it, okay. Alright, so that's basically how to work with Lumetri scopes, getting your color right. So try to match your whites, your blacks, your skin tones and your white balance. These four things are all inside of the Lumetri scope, so definitely use them for these purposes. And yeah, uh, apart from that, you do your grading on your own. I have a bunch of other tutorials, maybe like the fairy tale uh, color grading tutorial is a very nice one. Even though if you don't want to create fairy tale style color grading, you really learn a lot in there to create your own very original and creative color grading inside of Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.